Hello, I'm Patrick Ryan, President of the Tennessee World Affairs Council, and this is Global Dialogue Plus. But today we are talking in this special episode with Professor David DeRoche. Uh, he is a U.S. Army Colonel retired. He is, the, uh, is an associate professor at the Near East South Asia Center for Strategic Studies. Uh, professor DeRoche, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. We are uh, going to have a brief conversation about uh, what's happening in Afghanistan and focus on uh, what the future might hold for U.S. security interests there. Uh, Professor, we've uh, heard a lot of commentary about the uh, persistence of capability to address the uh, reconstitution of terrorist threats from Afghanistan, which was the first uh, reason we went into Afghanistan in 2001. Can you share your perspective and insights on what the U.S. security posture might be in the future regarding this over the horizon uh, ability to uh, to address the threats like Al Qaeda uh, reforming in Afghanistan. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think it's more. Um, first off, it's highly asymmetric, and I think it's more theoretical than practical. Uh, it's going to be very very difficult to prevent terrorist groups from reestablishing themselves uh, if the Taliban uh, are not aggressively policing this sort of thing. Um, you know, the uh, 9-11 terrorists, you know, that hijacking cost about $100,000 and it was uh, cooked up, uh, you know, somewhere on the Afghanistan-Pakistan border by a bunch of guys sitting around in a mud hut. Um, there were no, uh, you know, encrypted communications. There was no satellite photographs that would have determined this. Uh, so all of our remote sensing abilities are just not there. Um, if we want to interdict these sort, this sort of plotting. We have to have human sources on the ground. And the kind of people that we relied on that are the kind of people who are probably being rounded up and executed right now. Um, then if we can determine that a plot like this is in the basis, we, again, our options are not good. Instead of, you know, dispatching uh, an aircraft from, you know, Bagram Air Base, which is, you know, maybe 50 miles away, uh, that has, you know, persistent overhead capability, we're looking at, you know, long range bombers, cruise missiles launched from submarines, uh, you know, stuff that are thousands of miles away that would have to overfly either Iran or Pakistan, neither of which may be willing to be involved in this. Uh, and, you know, that's an extremely expensive capability, um, you know, characterized by George Bush as firing a cruise missile uh, at a tent. Um, you know, so it's it it's not very cost effective for us. So honestly, uh, what we're really doing is hoping that the Taliban have changed their stripes that they, uh, you know, in their 20 years uh, in exile, they've realized that working with Al Qaeda was their um, downfall. And that if they can keep, you know, terrorist organizations determined to export revolution at bay, then, you know, they won't be fully welcomed in the international community, but they might function sort of like Burma, one of these countries that has limited interaction, but, you know, is recognized as a country and has a degree of, uh, you know, will put up with a lot of human rights grief but is sovereign and functions more or less as a normal country. Now we've seen uh, some some spokespersons uh, for the Taliban talk about the uh, global jihad continuing, and we've also seen uh, actors like China, Russia, and Iran moving in quickly to start conversations with the Taliban, which may make it more difficult for the United States to exert pressure via sanctions and so forth if others are granting uh, uh, legitimacy. And, uh, you know, you also mentioned that the, the pre-9-11 uh, Al-Qaeda presence in Afghanistan, um, the United States did launch cruise missiles at, at tents, basically, a, a couple of attacks at uh, trying to get the bin Laden on the ground uh, were unsuccessful. So with, with all these uh, things in the air, what, what uh, concerns you most about the prospects for the United States to uh, maintain some level of uh, prevention against uh, Afghanistan becoming the, the landing uh, or the launching place for uh, attacks against the West? Well, basically, our strategy right now, to a large extent, depends on hope. We hope that the Taliban won't allow this to happen. Um, right. Our means to coerce and prevent this, if the Taliban, you know, are not... Uh, uh, you know, conducive to this, you know, we, we basically hope that they've renounced their basic ideology, which is a global revolution. Um, if they have not done that, and I can't think of too many examples in history of an organization that has achieved a military victory and then said, 
our ideology is flawed, we need to renounce it, um, then we're going to be left with a much smaller tool bag uh, than we had while we had a presence in Afghanistan. So that's going to be very, very hard. And the countries that we relied on before uh, to operate in Afghanistan, uh, you know, the neighboring countries, particularly Pakistan, they're liable to say, hey, you know, they're going to be dealing with instability. All these weapons that were captured, they're going to turn up uh, being used against Pakistani forces. So they're going to say, wait a minute, you know, why should we expose ourselves to risk again when you might lead of us holding the bag? Um, so that's part one, not very sanguine. The second point, the neighboring countries, Russia, China, Iran, that uh, are indulging in a moment of schadenfreude, um, they are about to have a reckoning too. Um, they have their own problems. Um, you know, Iran is a Shia country. Uh, there was a marriage of convenience to see the Yankees gone. But now that we're gone, the Taliban regards Shia as apostates. And when they were in government, they massacred Iran's co-religionists. And there's nothing to suggest that they won't revert to that once they have a free hand. Uh, the Uyghur uh, independence movement, um, you know, found safe haven for the more violent aspects of that in Afghanistan. I cannot see China providing enough influence to prevent that from occurring. Uh, that would require the Taliban to turn back on their basic uh, ideology, to basically renounce uh, their co-religionists. Uh, similarly, Russia has a huge problem with its Muslim population. You know, the massacre in Beslan is one of the worst terrorist incidents uh, that I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, these guys are going to find a safe haven there. So this, this, this will be regionally destabilizing. And I think in the long run, it will uh, work against the interests of Iran, uh, China, and Russia, in spite of, you know, their end zone celebration right now. Well, um, you've given us a great deal to, uh, to think about, and, and uh, we will be uh, hopeful and we will be watching, and it's an important reason for people to uh, keep up with what's going on in the world as, as this uh, situation unfolds. We've been talking with uh, Professor David DeRoche, Associate Professor at the Near East South Asia Center for Strategic Studies. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for your time and expertise. No, it's always an honor, Patrick, and uh, hi to all my friends in Tennessee. Great, thanks again.